Hello friends today in this short lecture series we are going to discuss a very important topic the topic of our discussion is why you see a lot of e raised to the power x in physics if you go through many physics books you will find that this factor e raised to the power x is quite dominant in many areas so we should explore why this e raised to the power x is important to understand this first we will discuss a little bit about the exponential functions you should have heard that exponential functions are used to explain the growth so let us consider at x equal to 0 there is some quantity which is 1 at x equal to 1 consider this doubles its quantity this becomes 2 and at x equal to 2 this further doubles and it reaches to a quantity 4 in the next step so it further doubles and it becomes 8 in this way there is one function which is growing and if you plot this you will get a plot like this something like this you can write this curve as 2 raised to the power x you can match its values at x equal to 0 this is 1 at x equal to 1 it becomes 2 at x equal to 2 this is 4 and at x equal to 3 this becomes 8 so this is an exponential function which is defining a quantity which doubles after each interval now let's move to another concept so the concept is what if i differentiate this function if i want to calculate a tiny slope of this function so what should i get the pet formula is d by dx 2 raised to the power x i get a quantity 2 raised to the power x natural logarithm of this quantity 2 you can see that there is some function its differentiation is the same function multiplied by some constant now we want to come to a special case where the differentiation of this function is the same function or you can say this constant factor should be equal to 1 so if i write this i can write this as differentiation of a function is equal to the same function we basically want this is there any function like this and the answer is yes there is a function like this whose differentiation is equal to the same function or you can say this term is 1 in that case so if you dig further you will find that this function is e raised to the power x so first a basic question is what is this e e is just an irrational number whose value is 2.71828 and similarly so on so just the same way we chose this value 2 here if we choose this value at this place this will show a certain property such that its differentiation will be equal to the same function isn't it strange e is just a number and if we define a growth using this number then it follows a certain trend which is this here we have some major things to understand number 1 what does this equation mean that the differentiation of a function is equal to the same function it means that at every point of this function the value of slope is equal to the value of the function see at this point the value of slope is 1 and the value of function is also 1 similarly this pattern follows for the whole function this is the property of e raised to the power x now we have the second question why this number is used at too many places in physics so this is our second question 
I will come to this question in a while. And we have a third question which is why this value? value of e is 2.71828 why not some other value so basically the reason is that that nature behaves in its own way and this is us who are trying to put mathematics on its action in our present number system this value is this in some other number system this value value could be something else nature behaves in its way and in our number system it comes to this value now the major question question number two why we see a lot of e raised to the power x in physics and the answer is because the things in this nature behave like this and what is that behavior that behavior is defined by this equation that the change in function is somehow proportional to the function itself now let us look at some examples. In this, I am going to discuss three basic examples with you. First is from radioactivity. Second is from first order chemical reaction. And third example is from charging and discharging of a capacitor. So first example, radioactivity. When you read about the decay in radioactivity you should have seen this equation that n equal to n node e raised to the power minus lambda t so at some place you are getting this exponential function this is only visible when at the back end you have this property that the rate of decay is proportional to the number of particles and just because I introduce a constant lambda so this becomes like this and finally this will give you this equation wherever you see this exponential function just imagine at the back end somewhere this is happening where the change in function is somehow proportional to the function itself now Let's talk about first order chemical reaction. It is uh, similar to the radioactivity. So you should have seen that the concentration of a chemical A is equal to the concentration of chemical A at time t equal to 0 or when you started your reaction into e raised to the power minus kt. Here also this exponential is working the same way at the back end you have this relation that change in the concentration of A is proportional to this value A and we just introduce in this case as well a constant and solve this. These two are very simple cases in which you can easily understand the physics behind this equation. Now the most interesting case you will amaze to know about this that charging and discharging of a capacitor behaves like this for this let us shift this a little bit let us start with discharging of a capacitor the charge on a capacitor is q in the beginning when time t is equal to zero the charge is q and this decreases the way e raised to the power minus t by r c doesn't this look like same as the equations we discussed earlier but where is nature of exponential when you study a simple circuit of a capacitor and you apply Kirchhoff's voltage law in that equation at some place you will find that the decrease in the charge on the capacitor plate is proportional to the charge on the capacitor plates and minus dq by dt is equal to q by rc so in this case this constant is 1 by rc which is a time constant so that theory you can read with the capacitors but basically the exponential nature is working here as well now let us see how the charging equation behaves the charging equation of a capacitor is q 
is equal to CV man minus e raised to the power minus T by RC. This also has this exponential component but uh, a little bit in complex form. So here let us look at can we understand this equation. First thing is that this CV is equal to the Q the maximum charge a capacitor can carry which is the same as this. Now what is this factor? So let me teach you this factor using a graph. First I am plotting discharging curve. If you look at this equation you will find that at t is equal to 0 this exponential component will become 1 and the charge on the capacitor plate is maximum charge q. This q component is common in both so I am discuss just discussing this exponential component. At one place we will discuss this component at another place we will discuss this component okay let's start with the discharging component at t is equal to 0 this is starting with 1 and this component then decreases exponentially and we can say that this is defined by e raised to the power minus t by rc let me plot one line representing this constant value 1. Now look at it carefully. If at certain value of t this value is defined by e raised to the power minus t by rc this value from this point to this point will be defined by 1 minus e raised to the power minus t by rc. The way a capacitor discharges 1 minus the same way it gets charged. Now if I plot this function on this graph then I will get a similar function like this. You can also see that this graph are just mirror images of each other at this value half. You can interpret that the way it is discharging the same way it gets charged because this is the same capacitor and in both ways we are able to define this exponential nature of charging and discharging of a capacitor. So overall as a summary we can say that wherever you see this e raised to the power some function then at the back end you will find some quantity which is changing and the change in that quantity is proportional to that quantity itself. And just because the nature behaves this way e raised to the power x is so much popular and highly visible in physics. Hope you like my short lecture series and its videos. If you have any query you can leave comment and you can also give suggestions for my future videos. Keep supporting, keep sharing, have a good day.